Now, I haven't watched SCP. No, 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 I've watched SCP recently. It hasn't been that long. But it's been a while since I've been able to watch one on stream. And we're watching the season opener animated. This is actually one of my favorite ones. Um, this is about the one where the basketball players, um, they get stuck. They're stuck in the game. And so, yeah, bro. I mean, let's go. It was a cold September morning in Boston, Massachusetts. Mark Bridges was up at 6 a.m. He wanted to be one of the first to arrive at the car boot sale. He knew that all the best bargains were snapped up within the first hour of a sale. When he arrived at the site, there were at least a dozen people there already. Mark parked his car and set off walking around. He passed cars full of vintage clothes, shoes, books, etc. But he didn't bother stopping to look. He knew there wouldn't be anything there of interest to him. Instead, he headed to a car at the back of the site. He had often bought things from the man. Vinyl records, old movie recordings, things like that. As he approached the car, he was surprised to see a DVR player sitting in the boot of the car. He hadn't seen one of those for years. How much do you want for the player? You can have it for $10. Mark didn't bother trying to barter the price. I don't know I'll take it for five. He handed over the $10 and picked up the player. When he got home, he plugged it in and connected it to his TV. He got one of his SD cards and tried to put it in, but something was stopping it. I think there must be another SD card still in here. Uh, I got you. the eject and the card came out. Mark couldn't believe it. On the top of the card was written, Boston Celtics versus Miami Heat, 26th October. I was at that game. How fantastic. I can watch it again. Mark pressed play and oh, began nah, to watch that's the horrifying. Game, but he hadn't got very far into the game when a confused look spread across his face. Wait a minute. Ray Allen didn't commit a technical foul. I would remember if he had. He was my favorite player at the time. Mark watched as the game continued, but more and more things were different from the game he had attended. Suddenly, Mark nah, heard a Chad, knock. what are you doing if, if you feel that, bro? You you watching a game that you was at and everything is different, bro. I would, yo, nah. This is tripping me out, bro. At the door. When he opened it, two men in suits were standing there. Mark was about to ask them what they wanted when one of them lifted his hand and Mark felt something sharp puncturing his arm. Welcome back to SCP Post. Today we bring you the safe class subject, SCP-1733. But before I go on, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any more SCP stories. SCP-1733 is a digital recording of the 2010-2011 NBA season opening game played at the TD Garden in Boston, Massachusetts. On the 26th of November, 2010, between the Boston- 26th of November, nice. In Celtics and Miami Heat. Agents monitoring social networking sites were alerted to SCP-1733 when a Boston native complained in a Facebook thread on the 27th of October about a technical foul in the third quarter involving players Ray Allen and Chris Bosch that never occurred in the original broadcast. When confronted, he uploaded the relevant segment, much to the confusion of the other people in the chat. Foundation agents embedded in Facebook's moderator team deleted the thread and procured the IP addresses of all individuals present at the chat at this time to locate and administer Class A amnestics. The Motorola brand DVR containing SCP-1733 was recovered for study. The DVR containing SCP-1733 is to be kept in a secure video archive. Playback of SCP-1733 is strictly forbidden unless required for wow, research. Big give this up. I appreciate that, bro and personnel must contact Dr. Geller for permission to study it. Study of the footage has since revealed the nature of the recording's anomalous properties. Although initially diverging from the original broadcast only negligibly, such as quarter point totals and occurrences of fouls, SCP-1733's content has begun to markedly digress with every additional playback. Recorded entities have been observed to retain memory of previous playings and as such have developed a burgeoning awareness of their existence. It is hypothesized that playbacks impart an unquantifiable measure of cognizance to the entities inhabiting SCP-1733, with consecutive playings greatly expanding recall of previous events. This effect is cumulative and extends to all persons in the arena. Quality of awareness has progressed from reported feelings of intense deja vu by commentator personalities Mike and Tommy to a near eidetic memory of preceding playbacks. However, to note, no entities inside SCP-1733 have addressed the viewer directly or shown awareness that they reside in a digital recording. The individuals in the recording are virtually indistinguishable from their real-life counterparts in talent, behavior, and mannerisms on court. 
Fans in the crowd also appear to be real human beings in all respects, and Foundation inquiries into the current status of these persons has found nothing of note. For all intents and purposes, recorded entities appear to be actual individuals but somehow abiding in a digital medium. It was initially thought the purpose of SCP-1733 was to depict an infinite number of game outcomes, since players were able to modify offensive and defensive strategies during- Sorry I'm not really talking too much, but he's just explaining everything so precisely, it's not really much for me to comment on, you know what I'm saying? Not really much for me to say, I'll be honest with you, bro. Every playback. By playback 34, players and coaches became so keenly adapted to the opposing team's playbook that the score remained 0-0 until 3 minutes and 34 seconds left in the first quarter. As Kanye! <laughs> week in early stage nah, bro, you did not just call this nigga Kanye. <laughs> it's likely manifested as a vague intuition felt by players, fans, and team personnel alike, interfering with their ability to grasp the full scope of their situation. Researchers have been unable to duplicate the effects of SCP-1733 with other recordings made by the DVR confirming the device is not the source of SCP-1733's aberrant properties. Due to the distress visited upon inhabitants of SCP-1733, testing has been suspended indefinitely. Playback number two shows the TD Garden crowd booing the Miami Heat players during their entrance. The first deviation from the original <laughs> LeBron got a hairline! Heat forward LeBron James observed to have scowled and shaken his head dismissively at the crowd. In the 15th playback, Fans appear noticeably subdued when displayed on the facility's HD scoreboard screen. Celtics power forward Glenn Davis is able to execute a crucial block late in the fourth quarter on LeBron James, which he could not complete during the original broadcast, securing the Celtics' lead. Commentators note Glenn Davis' dedication to performing well on both sides of the court in spite of the Big Three's blistering ball movement on offensive plays. An awareness of previously played games has begun to form. Playback 26 is the first Miami Heat victory. The crowd becomes aggressive, shouting obscenities and hurling foodstuffs at the Celtics. Commentator Tom Heinzone understood the frustration, criticizing the Celtics coaching staff for becoming so complacent after having cracked the code of the Miami Heat offense. As this was the first game together for the Miami Big Three, it is unlikely any coaching personnel would have become so adjusted to an unfamiliar offense in a single game. In Playback 27, commentators Mike and Tommy note a feeling of deja vu during the Heat's grandiose entrance. Crowd remains subdued during key Celtics plays. Celtics emerge the victors, prompting Tom Heinzone to remark, The Celtics have come a long way winning back the hearts of their fans. When asked to elaborate by Mike Gorman, Heinzone could only respond that he felt the team had an embarrassment to atone for, but he could not specify further. In Playback 44, the teams emerge disoriented and confused, and the game is suspended. Majority of the time is spent by medical professionals <laughs> assessing the <laughs> Nigga, is that Shaq? Bro, they throwing anybody in this shit, right? It's no way <laughs> Players, who remain convinced they had dreamt of playing the season opener frequently the previous night. When informed of the situation by team staff, commentators Mike and Tommy affirm the same feeling. The crowd is also afflicted, and the recording ends with courtside correspondents interviewing members of the crowd on the nature of their dreams. By Playback 45, however, comprehension of their predicament had reached such a point that players declined to play altogether, and assembled with the rest of those in attendance to formulate possible escape plans. It is the conclusion of Foundation researchers that the inhabitants of SCP-1733 are imprisoned in the setting of the recording as they have been unable to exit by any means. Doors leading out of the arena have not yielded to any force. The assembly has also been unable to exit from locker rooms, player facilities, and skyboxes. Waiting for patrons arriving in at scripted points prior to the start of the first quarter has also been unsuccessful. Individuals leave by where patrons entered and are then unable to navigate and escape from the adjacent corridors that girdle the main arena. Escape attempts have since grown more desperate and have included failed attempts at constructing makeshift explosives, all-out rioting, the fracturing of the assembly into three opposing factions, until eventually leading oh. to the ritualistic murder and disembowelment Yo. of players in the hopes of appeasing whatever it is that confines them. However, you know they got upon LeBron the beginning first. of a new playback, all persons are returned to their pre-game status, unharmed. By playback 65, the recording is almost unrecognizable from the original. 
The crowd is unable to exit the facility. Players, coaches, and all involved team personnel have presumably barricaded themselves in off-screen player facilities. The infirm and parents, accompanied by their children, have retreated to the northeast corner of the balcony rise and have elected to wait out playbacks as they occur, making their territory with a Celtics championship flag. The crowd separated into three separate factions. Some individuals, henceforth referred to as the Faith Keepers, have expressed to multiple gatherings that they believe being confined to the TD Garden is a punishment for rampant consumerism of the post-industrial world. God they have damn. burned offerings of mobile phones, car keys, handbags, and wallets in center court for the past four playbacks. By playback 73, the Faith Keepers have grown in numbers, and the conditions continue to deteriorate. This eventually leads to individuals leaping from the balcony section in the opening 10 minutes of playback 112. Damn. Throughout the individual playbacks, we see the Faith Keepers oh, storming player no. facilities to retrieve Paul Pierce and LeBron James. <coughs> the players are regularly <coughs> sacrificed and their bodies are subsequently displayed <coughs> in the arena's jumbotron. The murder of players seems to have no effect on the recording. The last playback amended in a red color, and since then, the recording has not been played back again. What did you think of that SCP case? They said, LeBron, get your ass out here, nigga. Bro, they really grabbed LeBron and Paul Pierce and sacrificed them, bro. That's so crazy. This shit is fire. I like the, the other one, the first one that I watched. Like, this one. This one is much more creepier. I will not lie. This, Miami Heat during entrance. This one is much Miami more Heat creepier because the voice and the ambience of it is just fucking crazy, bro. Oh, man. SCPs. You gotta love them, man. You gotta love them.